second part was my t equals 10 log base 10. Now, what does it mean by the 90 decibel becomes 100 decibel? So here, if we add 10, this is 10 log base 10, I reference I, plus log base 10. So this is 1. It's uh, 90 plus 10. And 1 is going to be equal to log base 10 and 10. So this is 1. Now, because uh, it's both, both log, we can multiply this. So it's going to be 10 log base 10. 10i. So here, the decibel level going up by 10 is equivalent to 10 times the energy. So for this kind of machine, we have to bring nine more machines and uh, fire it together to achieve a 10 decibel increase. So it's a lot. Uh, it's not like uh, increased by 10%, it's 10 times. So we have to be careful there. Uh, the decibel level, it's based on the energy or power. However, because it involves how human perceive the noise, like some sound, it might be very loud, but it might not be annoying. Some sound, even though it's small, it might be quite annoying. So just the measurement log with the energy doesn't properly scale with the human perception. So a correction is applied. It's uh, called a weighting. So it depends on the frequency of the sound. Uh, people perceive it differently. So what you do with the a weighting is uh, you kind of uh, give more weight to the sound within the frequency that uh, makes people more annoying. That is 2 to 4 kilohertz. Now what this sound is, uh, we can hear, kind of starting from the reference, uh, 440 hertz, that's officially called A4, is this note here in the middle of the piano. It's an uh, A sound, do re mi fa sol la, and uh, that's 440 hertz, that's what the orchestra tunes before they start playing. So if we can hear that sound here. So that is 440 hertz. Uh, Nowadays, you guys might not really using the wired phone, but if you pick up a home phone, then that's the sound you will hear. Now, in terms of the sound, the, it goes up by one octave when the frequency doubles. So the 880 hertz sound, that's still going to be A, but it's going to be A5, uh, the next sound. And then, if you go another octave, that's going to be 1760. So it starts to get kind of irritating. So adding around 2 to 3 decibel sound in the high sensitivity range, that is uh, 2 to 4 kilohertz, and subtracting 2 to 3 decibel from sounds outside that range. That is what uh, A weighting is doing. Um, for another example, this 440 hertz is uh, like 
usually kind of the highest note that a regular male vocal can sing in their singing. So for measuring the noise, uh, we've been talking about the decibel scale. And we have to think about two different measurements. One is single event, and the other one is cumulative. The single event is just like you measure the noise right now. So you bring a noise meter, and you measure the noise. It's maybe 85 decibel, 80 decibel, something. So it's the current measurement. It doesn't have anything to do with what was the noise before or what was the noise after. Cumulative measurement is for a certain amount of time, like for a 24-hour day or maybe an year. So basically, the cumulative measurement is the measured average of the single event measurement. For the single event, most commonly used metric is called EPNL. So it's uh, effective perceived noise level. And this one is like more sophisticated, complicated version of the A weighting. It accounts for the duration and tone of an event by assigning additional weight to certain discrete frequency tones that are particularly irritating to ear. So regular A weighting is just based on the frequency, but uh, EPNL, it does some internally complicated computation to account for the style of the sound, because even it's the same pitch, like different instruments, the like A6 note is going to sound different in piano, it's going to sound different in violin, it's going to sound different in some uh, person, a uh, high soprano playing. So it accounts for the tone together. And this is used for the certification. If you remember the chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, you add three measurements, like it becomes 270 something. It's all using the EPNL. And if you are using the EPNL, you kind of specify that by writing EPNDD. The most commonly used cumulative metric is DNL. That stands for day, night, average sound level. So this is a time average cumulative equivalent sound level. So basically, you measure the EPNL like every hour, and then you make the average for the time period. If it's a 24 hour period, then you measure the 24 measurements. However, it's not just a simple average. There's another compensation involved in here because even though it's the same level of noise, uh, your perception will be different uh, based on the background noise. If it's a quiet night, like a small amount of noise could be annoying. If it's kind of loud day, then it might be okay. So when you are averaging the measurement, 10 decibel increase for nighttime, it's uh, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. noise to account for its greater impact. So this DNL is standard metric of FAA for determining the noise impact of aggregate operations around the airport in the U.S. So this is the DNL contour so around this area. This particular example is at New York LaGuardia Airport. And whoever measuring the noise uh, went around that area and measured the noise like at many, many different places over a long period of time. And then calculate the DNL. And if you have that kind of a data, you can draw a contour of the same DNL. So as you can expect, it's the loudest, most amount of noise when you're closer to the runway. 
And then, as you get farther and farther from the runway, your noise level decreases. So here, in this example, the last line, purple line, is a 60 decibel in terms of DML. Uh, it's around here. So again, this is an average. So during the day, if you live here, your actual noise level, it's not always 60. When the airplanes uh, take off and land, it's going to be over 60. And when the airplane's not operating, it's going to be less than 60. But in average, it says it's 60. So this kind of a noise contour can be used uh, for this one I actually covered, but just let's uh, repeat it. Many useful uh, applications. Uh, so one thing you can do is uh, overlay the population distribution from the census data. So I basically you overlap this with the map with actually houses and building and you can kind of put how many people live there. So with that, you can calculate how many people are living within the 60 decibel boundary. How many people are living within the 70 decibel boundary. So you can figure out how many people and properties are subject to noise of different levels. And you can find out uh, who qualifies for noise mitigation funds. So one of the things that airports might do is compensate people, actually give out money for who's like, living within a certain level or more noise. Uh, and uh, extreme case might be actually offering them money to move to another place. And also determine appropriate usage of certain areas regarding new development. School, hospitals, religious institutions, and residents, residents means homes, those have to be higher relatively. So they will have a maybe limit, let's say for school and homes, it has to be outside the 60 DNL boundary. And maybe factories and shopping center, it maybe has to outside in like 70 decibel boundary. And something like that, it will be different from country to country and region to region. But you can actually use this data for giving out the permit to, for the development. One example I saw uh, in Jinju, where they have an airport for Kai, the Korea aerospace industry. There is an apartment building right outside the airport. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you kind of do this official measurement and stuff, that area wouldn't be qualified for residents. And uh, nobody knows how they got the permit to build an apartment there. But people living there will suffer from the noise generated from the airport. 